In just this past week, a man in Croydon was attacked by a cyclist armed with a zombie knife and a man in Kensington was killed by a regular knife and a murder investigation has begun. We all know by now that knife crime is getting pretty out of hand in the UK and uh, specifically London and surrounding areas like Croydon. And there's a report today in the Daily Mail of an event in Croydon and it's a cyclist who is, uh, well, he's got a bit of road rage with a driver and he attacks the motorist with a zombie knife. So the Mail reports, dash cam footage captures the horrifying moment the young man sprinted after a Volkswagen Polo on a busy high street in Croydon before trying to break through the driver's side window. The cyclist was carrying a huge zombie knife. Uh, the driver almost hit the cyclist, causing the row. In a brazen attack, the cyclist pulls out the long blade and tries to get into the car. He lands a few blows, uh, the window shatters and the driver flees for his life. And this story comes um, after a man has become the 43rd knife crime murder victim in London. Uh, it happened in Kensington. Uh, a man was stabbed to death. Uh, it wasn't a zombie knife, it was a regular old knife. Um, a manhunt and murder investigation is now launched and after the guy died at the scene after about 40 minutes. So I saw this story of a London surgeon who claimed that Donald Trump's remarks on London being a war zone because of knife crime. He says that the claims were ridiculous. There's a story here uh, from Sky. Donald Trump's suggestion that guns could help tackle violent crime in London is ridiculous, as surgeon in the capital has said. Uh, so Trump basically was talking about the NRA, say, uh, talking to the NRA, saying, well, they don't have guns there, but they do have knives, and there's blood on the floors, and Lo uh, London's like a war zone for horrible stabbing wounds. I mean, he's not wrong. 43 killed from knife crimes? I think it's 65 killed uh, in London so far from knife crimes and shootings. So this surgeon in London, um, Professor Karim Brohi, a trauma surgeon from the Royal London Hospital, said knife violence is a serious issue for London. We are proud of the excellent trauma care we provide and, of course, our violence reduction programmes. And I, I can't argue with that. I'm sure they provide great care, but the point is they shouldn't have to be providing this care in the first place. He went on to say, the Royal London Hospital has cut the number of our young patients returning after further knife attacks from 45% to 1%. Again, fantastic, but to call Trump's claims ridiculous is demonstrably, I mean, false, it's, it's silly. Uh, obviously, there's a knife crime issue in, in London, uh, and in the rest of the UK, we're seeing zombie knife attacks happening. I mean, this is total insanity. There's another zombie knife case that happened in Basingstoke, which is southern England. Uh, there's an article here from the Basingstoke Gazette. Three teens who were found with two foot long zombie knives and class A drugs have been sentenced. Officers from Basingstoke's neighbourhood policing team stopped in a taxi in the Darlington Road area on Wednesday, 25th of April. Basingstoke Magistrates Court heard on Monday. When they searched the three passengers inside, they found that two of them were carrying zombie knives, which were around two foot in length. So we've got a few problems here. We've got knife crime, regular old knife crime, but we've also got zombie knives. Zombie knives. So if you don't know what zombie knives are, so they're blades that are up to about two feet long. Uh, and they're called zombie knives because they literally look like something from a zombie apocalypse film. They've got loads of curves and holes in them and, you know, make it easier for stabbing and gouging. These are brutal knives. These are not meant to be used for anything other than really killing someone or something, um, an animal or whatever. Um, but they can be purchased online. Now, as, it, as far as I can tell, these knives are banned, but they're still being sold online. There's an article here in The Sun, uh, Blades of Glory. Uh, Bades of Blaze of Gory banned zombie knives selling on eBay for just eight pound as knife slaughter cripples London. Despite a crackdown on the sale of knives and an eBay ban on those the sale of all knives to UK customers apart from cutlery, several weapons were found on the internet site with one 7.5 centimeter blade selling for just eight pounds fifty. These are not knife nice looking knives. No reasonable person could say they were going to use these for chopping vegetables. Although we're not going to be able to chop vegetables very well soon anyway, because have you seen the new, the, new, uh, the new rules that are coming in? They're talking about making the ends of knives round now. <laughs> oh, it's just insanity. Um, but this, this zombie knife crime uh, is, is just something I never ever thought I would see. And it's not just London, the whole country is suffering. And something needs to be done about it. When we've got people walking the streets, cycling around 
with a zombie knife in their backpack. We know there's a cultural problem here. People aren't just doing this willy-nilly because it's a bit funny. There's, there's a serious issue behind this. I think it's a lot of things, it's a lot of things. I think it's largely a cultural issue. You know, when you've got city centres like London that are increasingly divided, increasingly ghettoised, um, people are going to war over postcodes. You heard of it, the postcode wars? Gangs literally battling with each other because they're from different parts of London. What do you think happens in a city when you're surrounded by concrete jungles? What do you think happens in a city where people are living in poverty? What do you think happens in a city where people are divided? Um, with extreme religious views, people are divided with, uh, well, you know, whole communities are being told that white people are working against them. What do you think is going to happen when people are told that the majority population of England hate them and are working against them and are institutionally racist towards them? That's why there's a problem with black gang crime. That's why, you know, and it's amazing as well because they don't realise they're killing their own people. It's majority young black lads that are victims of this kind of crime. There's a serious societal and cultural issue here. And we can ban knives, we can curve the ends of chopping knives, we can do all these things, but we're not going to solve it until we start looking at the source of the problem. So what can we reasonably do to stop knife crime in London? And what can we reasonably do to stop the use of zombie knives in London and the rest of the UK? Well, obviously, it's stop and search. And Lewisham Police showed us earlier last month how this works. Uh, last month, Lewisham Police posted a case of somebody carrying just a regular old hunting knife um, on Twitter. Uh, they said another hunting knife off the streets, one arrest, hashtag stop and search works. Yes, it does work. Stop and search in dangerous areas, in areas where you, uh, it's, it's more likely that people are going to be carrying these weapons. Stop and search works. Not only does it get the knives out of their pockets and their backpacks and out of their hands, it puts people off from carrying them themselves because they know if they get picked up randomly by the police they're not going to be walking out in the streets with zombie knives! Insanity! But one thing I did notice about this case, because Lewisham police went on to tweet again and it was an update, they said just to update the person concerned went to court and was giving 12 hours community service and an 85 quid fine. 12 hours community service and 85 quid. If I was a gangster I'd probably consider that worth it. You know, if you're a gangster who wants to carry knives out on the street, and if you get caught, then, oh, you might have to do 12 hours picking up litter, and it's only 85 quid. 85 quid? What gangsters can make that like that? It's nothing. We need tougher sentencing. Banning zombie knives uh, and other kinds of large knives from being carried on the street is one thing. Curving the ends of knives is one thing. But we're never going to solve the problem until we tackle the source of the problem. And if we, we want zombie knives off our streets, if we want to stop these brutal attacks from happening, if we want people to stop being killed in the middle of Kensington, even in London, we've got to tackle this in three ways. One, we've got to tackle the third world immigration into our cities and the crime being committed in multicultural success story areas and ghettos in London. Division in communities is creating this cultural tension. We need to stop the division, stop these ghettos, and start thinking about the people that we import into this country. Are we importing the best? And by the way, the people here, are they the best people that we've brought in already? If people aren't working, if people aren't contributing, then why have we got them here? Shouldn't we have an immigration policy that's sensible? An immigration policy that favours people who are working? I mean, an immigration policy that favours people with similar cultural norms? to us? Shouldn't we be doing that? I think that's one element to this. Another one is use stop and search in dangerous areas. Lewisham police have shown it's happened. Sadiq Khan's got this mental policy of targeted stop and search, which just means regular old policing. Let's start with real stop and search in dangerous areas. And finally, we need to start tightening up the sentencing. I don't want to see people getting 12 hours community service for carrying around large hunting knives or zombie knives. No, no, no. No more 85 quid fines. Let's toughen up the sentencing for people carrying around seriously dangerous weapons in these areas. If you're caught carrying a zombie knife, I want to see you go to prison. I want to see people put off from doing this kind of thing. I want tougher action from the police. I want tougher action from the politicians. And for God's, step, uh, for God's sake, let's stop focusing on butter knives. If you want to see more from me and the rest of the Rebel team, be sure to download our new app from the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store.